Hello, welcome to the Meet the Candidates Forum for the primary election for State House District 11. Our candidates are Katie Hall and Kelly Miles. We thank them for running for office and for participating in this forum. I'm Nikki Nelson, president of the League of Women Voters of Davis County. Peggy Carrico is our Zoom administrator and timer. All candidates in competitive Davis County primary races were invited to participate in these Meet the Candidate forums sponsored by our Davis County League. The forums are being recorded and posted on the League of Women Voters of Utah website, lwvutah.org slash Davis hyphen county. And uh, this is number 12 of 12 of these events. So do take the time to look at those uh, videos as you are filling out your ballot. Um, the League of Women Voters is nonpartisan and does not support or oppose political candidate, ca individual candidates or political parties. Our mission is to educate voters and encourage their participation in our government. Recordings of this forum may not be used without the express written approval of the League of Women Voters. Audio video of this forum must be, must be broadcast in its entirety, except by the media that may be reporting on the forum. Our format is a list of questions and the candidates get a specified time limit in which to answer. And we'll get started and we do it alphabetically. So Katie will start. Katie, please introduce yourself. Tell us why you're running for the legislature, what skills and experiences you have that will help you be an effective legislator and two or three of your main objectives. Um, first of all, thank you for holding this Meet the Candidate event. Um, I appreciate it. Um, my name is Katie Hall. I'm, I'm running for House District 11. Uh, one of the biggest reasons that I um, joined into this race is that um, I just didn't feel like my conservative values were being represented and I didn't feel like I was getting the communication that I needed and nor were my friends and neighbors and so they encouraged me to run. Um, I'm not a politician. I'm a mom of four boys. I'm, uh, I have three daughter-in-laws and one grandbaby boy. Um, I am a nurse. I've worked over at Ogden Regional over here for the last um, 10, 11, almost 11 years. Um, I have coached at the high, the local high school. I coached tennis for 12 years. Um, I um, have served on community councils and um, as a PTA president as well. Um, I believe that kind of all of these things in my background make me a really well-rounded candidate. Um, and just a just a genuine member of the community that is, I feel like really needed down in the legislature right now. Um, I feel like my interpersonal communication skills from being a nurse where I interact with people and help them during the most vulnerable times in their lives will help me at the legislature as I genuinely talk to people and debate laws and policies to help the people of Utah. Um, my biggest um, um, thing, <laughs> that I offer, I feel like is communication. I feel like holding a public office is a responsibility which shouldn't be taken lightly and um, being available to listen to concerns and answer questions and emails from people is paramount to doing a good job in this position. And right now, and I'm at a time in my life where I have that time and the passion for the issues and I have the time to commit to people. I really want to be able to be their voice for their concerns and, and you can't, do that if you're not communicating with them. Um, another big thing is just general overall conservatism. I feel like some of that is being lost down in the legislature right now. Um, some key things are being given into, and um, I'm, I know that we need to do some compromising, but there are some things that need to not be compromised on. Um, education is another big, another big thing that I really want to be able to work on down there. I want to come together to the table with parents and teachers and kids and, and let's find out 
where the big problems are and let's solve them. Let's let our teachers get back to teaching and also figure out why there's so many people that are taking their kids out and homeschooling them. Let, and, and if they are homeschooling them, let's help them find options to help pay for that if they don't feel that their kids are as comfortable in the public school system. So there's, there's a lot of issues that I would like to work on, but um, again, the biggest things for me are communication and conservatism. And thank you again, I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Kelly? Um, I echo, thank you for hosting this. I'm Kelly Miles and I've served a few years and you know me because I've been your neighbor for my entire life. With that in mind, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about public service. It's one of those things that I don't think people really understand until you're in it. It definitely takes time away from your family, friends, and jobs. And contrary to what people expect, there's very little in it for those that serve. And as soon as we leave, we're soon forgotten. But that's kind of what I love about it. All we can do is the best we can to serve you and the service in itself is its own reward. The last two years have been tough on all of us, but now we can finally put this whole pandemic mess behind us. Excuse me. Knowing that Utah led the way with conservative policies that led to the lowest COVID fatality rate and best economic recovery in the nation. Two years ago, my blood, sweat, and tears went into keeping this district Republican when Democrats wanted to knock me off for being too conservative. I did that because decisions are made in the majority caucus and I wanted to keep us there. You know that everything I do, I do for the good of the community and the state. I still have that fire in me and I would like to fight for you for one more term. Let me continue to prove to you how much I care. Three objectives I'd like to accomplish in the upcoming couple of years is dealing with drought preparedness, addressing transportation taxes, and overall quality of life, including specifically addressing mental health treatment and those that are suffering. Uh, thanks again for allowing us this opportunity. I'm Kelly Miles, and I appreciate your friendship, and I'm asking for your vote. Thank you. And Kelly, you can be first on this next question. Last year, the League of Women Voters hosted Meet the Candidate events throughout Davis County. Affordable housing was an issue for every community we visited. Predictions are that it will remain so for several years. Could the legislature have seen this problem coming and taken steps to prevent it? And what can the legislature do now? Thank you. Uh, no question, affordable housing affects everyone. I think we all saw prices increasing along with demand, but we all, all assumed it would taper off much sooner, sooner. The pandemic introduced some weird economic dynamics where we almost had a flashpoint recession and then we quickly bounced back. And we've been fighting seemingly random supply shortages and labor issues along the way. But it's been a present problem for the last few years. When it comes to whether we saw it coming or could we have stopped it, I'd analogize it to the movie Armageddon. An asteroid careened toward Earth, they knew it was coming, similar to the housing affordability crisis, but their solution was only possible in fiction, as would be ours, because the only way to fix this entirely would have been government control, which none of us want. But what we can do is educate home buyers and divest from government owned land so there is more to develop and meet housing needs. Thank you, Katie. Um, yes, I think there, there is some things that could have been done, but more importantly, I think there are things that still can be done. Um, I believe in local control. Um, I agree with Kelly on that. We don't need the federal government or the state government taking all control of those kinds of things. We need to let the cities with the city planners be the regulations for how their cities grow. And we need to help our small businesses thrive and be wary of the big business money that's, that's going into some of our smaller communities. 
Um, we as the people in the constituency need to also be holding our city councils um, accountable as well and being going to those meetings and staying involved with our local governments. Um, I really, um, part of what I want to do is encourage people to go to those meetings and get involved with your local governments. And as legislators, we need to be communicating as well with all of our city councils and our mayors of all of the cities in our districts to see how we can help them with growth issues. We, and now in our district, in District 11, we have eight cities that we have little parts of that it's gonna be a busy time to be able to go to all these meetings. I've already been starting to go to all the city council meetings and just see where their concerns are and talk with the mayors and the city councils. And um, we need to be involved with them and help them with their growth, so. Thank you. And you lead off with the third question. Utah is in a severe drought. How is your district faring with respect to water? Did the legislature do enough this year to meet the challenge of the drought? And what else do you suggest Utah can do to ensure enough water for essential needs? Yeah, drought is definitely on everyone's mind. Um, as I've been talking to constituents, um, it's a big, huge issue. I love the, con the water conservation efforts that I see my friends and neighbors doing. Um, we here in South Ogden have a metered system. So it's nice for residents to be able to call and they can call and see how they're doing on their water and continue being responsible with that. I've talked with some commissioner candidates who have been telling me that 80% of our secondary water is used for farming. And so, and we need our farms, we need, they need that water so I think as a legislature, I think there's more things that they could be doing to help our farmers. And I think there's ways that we can help them improve their technology for more wa um, water conserving ways, such as hydroponics or other things. Um, I think another thing too, that we need to make sure that our water is being, is being used here in Utah before we're selling it off to other states. So I think that's another thing that as a legislature, um, we need to maybe take a look at that as well. Thank you, Kelly. Um, the Weaver Basin Water Conservancy District is well managed, but I agree the, this level of drought is unprecedented in our lifetimes. You know, we can conserve in our yards all day long, but that pales in comparison to the positive impact of generational investment into water infrastructure. That's why I sponsored a bill last session to address the drought in the Great Salt Lake, which ultimately will help the surrounding ecosystem. Thank you. And uh, Kelly, continue with the question on education. Other than funding, what education decisions should the legislature be making and what should local school districts decide? Well, no question, funding is the lever the legislator, legislature has to pull. But I'm an, a believer in multifaceted approaches to education, including public schools, private schools, charter schools, and homeschoolers. We need to innovate in education, but the legislature can't do that on its own. What we can do is enable individuals and families to pursue improvements in education, to get involved with their local schools, with their local school districts and uh, their representatives on the school boards. And, and then we can come up with innovative ways to help improve our education system. Katie? Um, yes, I think the legislature is responsible for student growth outcomes, charter schools, election of school boards, um, where the funds and stuff are used, but our local school districts have the authority for employment, school boundaries, um, extracurricular activities, school course offerings and curriculum. And I think if we can get our parents and our local school boards together at the same table, like I was talking about earlier, um, a lot of the curriculum questions and problems can be solved together. I was talking to an educator who works on the curriculum here in Weber, County, in Weber School District, and she said they tried to have a meeting with the legislators this last legis legislative session, and she said it was very frustrating as they got down there. The legislators came in. They were there for maybe 30 minutes. 
talked about what they wanted to talk about and didn't listen to one thing that they said. So for me, positive changes in education need to be about communication with everyone involved, legislators, teachers, parents, so that we are on the same page for doing what's right for the kids. Okay, thank you. The next question, Katie. Utah and Davis County take pride in being good for businesses, but Utah ranks second to last in gender pay equity and 8% of Utah children live in poverty. Davis County's air is polluted and its roads are clogged. Is Utah and our Davis County placing too much emphasis on growth? Um, yes, I think, I think it feels like right now, like we are placing too much emphasis on growth. Um, I think what we need to be emphasizing is the quality of growth over just straight growth. People move to Utah because they want that suburban lifestyle with property and family-centered communities for their kids to grow and thrive. And I think some of the high density housing that's built, being built for the sake of just building and, and being uh, trying to have affordable housing is a little bit crazy because the prices are still too astronomical for most families. Um, I think in the end, those kind of things, if we don't try to control those, those kinds of things, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt our communities. So, so again, I think we need to emphasize the quality of growth over just straight growth. Thanks, Kelly. Well, not to be disagreeable, but I actually think Utah is a, a great place to live and I would never choose to live anywhere else. Um, I think as a state, we are maturing and with that will come gender pay equality. Um, additionally, our air quality is better now than it has been in recent years. We're constantly moving toward better air quality, but this isn't necessarily something you see. It happens in increments. With tier three fuels and raining in pollutants, we're making a lot of progress. Um, with regards to transportation, we all hate to see those orange cones. Um, but that's actually a sign that our transportation is improving and growing to meet our needs. I take Highway 89 or the Mountain Road through Davis County almost every day. And even with that construction, it's a much smoother drive ever since the stoplights were removed. So we're making progress. Uh, we've got great people in, in uh, transportation departments. And, and I think overall, our state is doing great. Thank you. And you can take the next question about okay. the, inland, the inland port. The inland port authority has been criticized for lack of transparency, giving no board representation to affected communities and lacking firm plans to prevent air and water pollution. Is the inland port good for Davis County? Do you have concerns for impacts on Davis County? And if so, how should they be addressed? So I understand the inland port has been criticized, but it's also been overhauled this year. The new board just took office and they're really gonna be shaking things up. And I'm not the type that'll cast judgment before we know what is even gonna happen. And I do believe there is a great opportunity for strong, economic hub for the entire state and Davis County included. Katie? Um, I, I too, I feel like um, I'm, I'm happy to see what they do, but if there has been criticisms of transparency, I hope they will change that and have more representation from the communities. Um, I feel like there is a concern with a lot of larger vehicles on the freeways, the pollution that causes the pop more population growth. Um, so I think if if they are just mindful of this and um, using their, I've, I've, I've heard too that I think they have use or they have goals of using rail to help with some of that. So hopefully that will, will work, but only time will tell. We'll have to see how that goes. Okay. Um, the Supreme Court, appears ready to overturn Roe versus Wade using language that calls into question prior rulings on contraception. What is your position on contraception, including the morning after pill and on Utah's trigger bill, 
allowing abortion only in cases of rape, incest, or the life of the mother. And this is yours, Katie. Okay. This is the abortion issue is a, it's a tough question. And I've been getting quite a few questions about this um, as people are concerned. Um, but it's one that does need to be addressed. Personally, I am, I am pro-life and I believe pregnancies are humans with potential, not potential humans. Um, I understand there are definitely some circumstances that could warrant aborting a pregnancy that would hopefully be done very early on. Um, but again, that's a decision that would be made with a woman and her doctor in those cases. Um, I don't like how abortion has been used seemingly for a tool for birth control in the United States over the last 50 years. Um, it's an, but at the same time, as we have that trigger bill, we also need to have something that, that would help with more counseling, more education, more assistance for women out there. As I, I feel like we need more free preventative options for those that can't afford birth, birth control. As with any issue, abortion isn't just about the act of abortion itself. It needs to be addressed on multiple levels. And we've got to do that with more counseling, more education, and um, more options, other options. So thank you. Thank you. Kelly? I'm definitely and staunchly pro-life. Um, I was a co-sponsor of the newborn safe haven bill that makes it safe for unexpected mothers to give up their children at hospitals in order to put them up for adoptions. And I also think we need to make the adoption system easier and more affordable. And there's no question we need to protect the sanctity of life. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, we have plenty of time at the end and we'll go with Kelly. Kelly, um, Clarify anything you would like to clarify, answer any question we should have asked, but we didn't. And especially tell us why we should vote for you. Well, and I'm, I'm gonna be short and sweet and, and right to the point. Um, I've served in this position for six years and I've demonstrated that I'm compassionate, I'm consistent and I'm a conservative. And I hope that that record will earn uh, a vote so that I can be returned to the legislature. Um, I think you did a great job asking questions and there's nothing further that needs clarified. And um, I'd appreciate um, those that are watching this if, if they would uh, take out their ballots and, and, uh, and vote. Okay, thank you. Katie? Um, thank you. Again, I appreciate you hosting and, and I enjoyed your questions. Um, I hope to earn people's votes with constant communication and conservatism. I believe that as your representative, I'm supposed to represent you. And I, how can I do that if I'm not accessible to you to answer your questions, emails, and calls? Communication is the key to feeling involved in our government. And I really want people to feel involved in their government and feel like the representative is representing them. Um, I'm running a grassroots campaign. My funds have all come from friends and neighbors who trust me and know I can do this job and I'm not beholden to anyone but the people. Um, I too would appreciate if people would get their ballots out and vote, but I, I would love to answer any more questions that people have. Um, get on my website, get on, get on the email and you will be answered right away. So thank you so much for hosting this. I appreciate it. Well, thank you both. We want to thank both of our candidates for running for office, which is not easy, and uh, for participating here. I want to remind the audience that we will soon have 12 Meet the Candidate videos on our website, lwvutah.org slash Davis hyphen county. And uh, to our candidates, we wish you a great evening and thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you.